In this video, we are going to be reviewing some angle properties and vocabulary regarding angles that you have learned in previous years. Now, as I read out these definitions, I want you to try and guess, before I give the answer, what the word is that matches this definition. So let's look at our first one. It says, an angle between 90 and 180 degrees. Well, that is going to be an obtuse angle. Now my next one says, an angle which are less than 90 degrees. If it's less than 90 degrees, that's going to be an acute angle. Now we have angles which are equal to 90 degrees. So if it's equal to 90 degrees, that's going to be a right angle. Then we're going to look at angles which are equal to 180. If it's equal to 180, it's going to be a straight angle. Next, if two angles are equal, they are going to be, one term we learned is opposite. And we're going to get to that later when we get some examples. Next is lines having the same direction will never intersect. So if lines have the same direction and never intersect, what's that called? Think of railroad tracks and stuff like that. Those are going to be parallel lines. Then we're going to have Lines that intersect at a 90 degree angle, those are called, so if something intersects at a 90 degree angle, starts with a P, it is perpendicular. They are perpendicular lines. So the next one is to cut something in half, which means to blank, an angle means to cut the angle in half. That is to bisect. So to bisect an angle is to cut it in half. Now another word for exactly the same. So this word means exactly the same, it's going to be congruent. So normally when we're talking about shapes and figures, we're going to be using the word congruent to mean exactly the same. So here are some properties that we need to remember. The sum of all angles in a triangle is equal to 180 degrees. Now to determine the measure of these angles here, we're going to always look at vertically opposite angles, which are always equal. So if I look at this 42, 42 is going to be equal to this here. So this number one must be 42. Now, another thing we must always look at is straight lines. Okay, so if I have a, we're always going to try and find straight lines. So right here, I have a straight line. That is, a straight line is always 180 degrees. So then, if this is 42, this side here is going to be 180 minus 42, which is going to give me a total of 138 degrees. And this 138 is opposite of 2, so 2 is equal to 138 degrees. Now, remember, triangles add up to 180. This right angle is opposite of this angle there, so that's going to have to be 90. And we said a triangle always adds up to 180, so we have 180 minus 90 minus 42 will be equal to my missing angle, which is 4. So that's going to give me a total of uh, 90 minus 42 is 48 degrees. So we also know 4 is equal to 48 eight degrees. Now we're looking at this three here, our last one to try and figure out. This here must be 90 degrees because we have a 90 there. This is 48 and that makes a 90 so then three must be equal to 42 degrees. Let's look at this next example. So here we have a bunch of lines. We have an angle of 15 and an angle of 57. So first thing I'm going to do is look at my opposite angles. My opposite angles are the opposite of 15. This is going to be 15. I'm just going to complete and get all these angles in here. 57 is here, so this must be 57. Now my problem is I can't figure out what is going to be this red angles. Well, looking at those red angles, I know this full circle is equal to 180. So if I take away the blue and the green from that circle, I could figure out the red. So we're going to have 180, take away 15, take away 57, 
is going to be equal to, we're going to call this x. Okay? So we go 180, take away 15 is 165. Take away 57 is going to give me 108. So I have this here is 108, and the opposite must be 108 as well. Another key thing to remember is that a full circles or all circles, the total degree or angle is 360 degrees. And that's where we get. If you go 360 degrees, you make a full circle. So now let's look at some key points of isosceles triangles. So isosceles triangles have two equal sides and two equal angles. Now, to know which angle correlates to which side, draw a line. So this angle here relates to this side. And that would mean that this angle here will relate to that side. So it's always going to be in the triangle, the angle that is opposite of the side, or the side opposite of the angle. So now here's another example that we have to remember, that when two lines are parallel, opposite and interior angles are equal. So let's take a look at this here. We have one line here, 35, and this is opposite, so this is going to be 35 as well, from what we learned before. Now, here's another key thing. If I look and I move this line perfectly up, and I move it like this, well, the 35 and 35 are going to be in the same spot. So this here must be 35. Is this going to be the same as this angle? And this part here will also be 35 because it's opposites. So that's it for our review in this video. Our next video we're going to be getting into some new definitions and new properties that you guys have not learned before.